treating the equation is actually trivial. Let me first uh, describe uh, uh, an example yet. So, so let me first uh, derive an example of this uh, basis. So, so I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do uh, the older version of Fe demo. So, uh, so I just uh, draw an arbitrary function. I uh, have a approximation. So, how do we derive a basis of this kind of uh, functions that are not only piecewise linear but also continuous? It's also a linear space, right? If you if you have a function like that, twice of that is also piecewise linear, it's also continuous across the elements. And if you have two functions like that, the summation of that is also like that, right? It's also continuous, piecewise linear. So so how do we derive a basis for that? Yeah? Um, do you each each function and the basis is defined in each domain separate elements? Okay, so let's try that. So each the the a suggestion is uh, um, let's try to derive each basis on a separate element. So let's try that. So basis for uh, piecewise linear continuous functions. Uh, yeah, you already discovered the problem, right? So if I construct each one separately, it won't be continuous. For example, in the first element, no problem. I can have a function that uh, goes from, for example, 1 back to 0 and stays 0 in other elements. That's fine. No problem. But on the second element, that doesn't work anymore. If I construct uh, something similar, if I start from 1, go back to 0, I can't possibly be 0 for all the other elements, right? Because uh, it'll create a discontinuity over here. So what should I do? If I do have such a function on the second element... Start the basis with the next element or the... Yes, I have to... In the first element, the function also has to be 1 over here, right? Now, if the function has to be 1 over here, and I want it to be as sparse as possible, I want it to have as a small non-zero region as possible, what should I do? Just let it slope back to 0, right? How about here? How about the next one? I'll have it valued 1 over this grid point and uh, slope back to 0, right? And the next one, I'll have it go 0 and uh, 1, 0. So basically, every function can be like that. It's non-zero in only two adjacent elements. Okay? And you can see that just by adding up functions like that, I can get to any functions like this. Why? Because it's linear. Oh, because it's linear. Can, can, you, can you tell me for this particular function, how can I construct uh, the set of a1 to a n. So, okay, so first of all, tell, tell me how many, what is the value of n for this function space? Ten? Are you sure? Twenty? Are you sure? Eighteen. Eighteen? Are you sure? No. Five. Five? Why five? Because yeah, each function is defined on two adjacent elements, but each element actually has two non-zero functions. Oh. Huh? Pardon? Is it nine? Is it nine? <laughs> For i in range 20, guess i. <laughs> For i in range 20, guess i. <laughs> 11 is correct. Yeah, it keeps it all of the 
Yes. Yes, 11 is correct. Okay, 9 is correct if the function has to satisfy two boundary conditions. 10 is correct if the function has to satisfy only one of the boundary conditions. So there are three possible correct numbers, okay, 9 or 10 or 11. For this one, none of the boundary conditions is satisfied and 11 is the right number. So you have one, you, to construct this function from the basis function is actually very easy. You multiply the first basis function, which slope from 1 here back to 0 here and stays 0, by 0.68, right? What you get is a function that goes from here back to 0 and stays 0. And then you add the second basis function times what? 0.8. Yeah, 0.81 or something. Then what you get is you started over here, you come over here, and then you go back to zero and stay zero. And then you add this value times the third basis function, right? This is why this particular way of constructing basis functions are called uh, a nodal basis function. It just uh, figures, figures out a set of nodes and uh, <coughs> try to construct the basis functions in such a way that when you want to represent a function these linear combination coefficients are actually exactly equal to the value of the function at the nodes okay it's a little bit like finite difference but actually uh, in principle it's very different it's just uh, the basis functions are constructed such that the finite element scheme looks like finite difference as much as possible and in principle, it works very different. And the scheme, the equation you derive, you're going to see actually can be very different. Okay? So this is nodal basis. And uh, uh, for the discontinuous basis functions, you can imagine each node is going to have two different basis functions, right? One you slope to one at the left and stays zero on the right because it can be discontinuous. Another one stays zero at the left and just, just suddenly jump to one at the right and slow back to zero. Okay, 